My understanding of human rights is that we all have the right to feel safe and included in our communities and that we all have access, we all have the right to have access to the things that would help us live um, a happy, healthy life. We were prohibited from exercising our rights of either, as either residents or citizens of the country. The state was actively discriminating against our LGBTI community and the question that we asked was, is that fair, is that just and is that acceptable in a modern democracy? Back in the days in Aotearoa, it was illegal to be able to be who you are. And so when that legislation passed, all of a sudden we could be out, we could be proud, we could be who we are. But the legislation and the laws that governed our marriage still couldn't, still didn't say that we could um, legally enter into any partnerships. The fact that you're a second class citizen, that you're not treated as an equal within your own country. Excluding a group in society from marriage is oppressive and unacceptable. There's no justification for the prohibitions of the past based on religion, race or gender. Um, I think that for a lot of people, um, that has damaged us, it's damaged individuals, it's damaged communities. This is not about church teachings or philosophy, it never has been. It's about the state excluding people from the institution of marriage because of their sex, sexual orientation or gender identity. That sense of I'm different or I don't belong or there's something wrong with me. You know, it was an amazing time in New Zealand politics, I think, um, where the leaders of our respective political parties um, made a stand and said, actually, we shouldn't condone, uh, you know, citizens and res residents of our country being treated differently from others. And so I think um, people then saw what human rights looks like. I'm very proud to be a member of a community that has stood up to be counted with such dignity and reason. We are allowing two people who love each other to have that recognised and I can't see what's wrong with that for love nor money, sir. I just cannot. You will see that in the Pakaranga electorate this morning, it was pouring with rain. We have the most enormous big gay rainbow across my electorate. It has to be a sign, sir. In the lead up to the marriage equality legislation, I think there was a lot of both excitement and nerves because we were like, wow, is this going to pass or is it not going to and then what will it be like if, if it actually does pass? There was a sense of like nervous hope. Members, the eyes are 77, the nose are 44. It was a hook that really helped unpack the movement for equality and eliminating homophobia and transphobia in our societies. Because, you know, my nana could understand, like, oh yeah, maybe one day all my grandchildren might grow up, they might fall in love, they might get married. And so that all of a sudden became really real for her, whereas, you know, my identity, she was sort of like, oh, that's that person over there, whereas all of a sudden when it came about, you know, something that would impact on our whanau, my ability to marry someone maybe of a similar gender to me. All of a sudden, she was invested in that conversation. Uh, and so an ability to be treated like an ordinary citizen of the country where you were lucky enough these days to find someone that you love, that you actually want to commit yourself to and, and form a family, um, is really special. There's definitely a feeling in our community that while marriage is really important, it's obviously not the be all and end all of eliminating homophobia, transphobia. And I hope that that, that, that next step or that, that next push for equality is being able to fully participate in society without any fear of discrimination or um, reprisals based on who you are, who you love and who you want to be and the way you want to express that in the world.